just got into Death Valley National Park, and the first stop that we made after we got into the park is at a place called Father Crowley Vista, and it's this canyon that you can see behind me here. It's a pretty neat canyon, but there was a lot of people lined up with telescopic lenses, and we were wondering what they were doing. And we found out that the jet fighters fly through this canyon. They call it Star Wars Canyon. In fact, I can hear one flying overhead right now. So we're gonna we're gonna wait a few minutes here and see if one flies through. They say fl they fly through here regularly. We had no idea that would be here, so we're hoping hoping that we see something. They're here, they're here, the jets. Look. Spectacular! What do you guys think? What do you think? That was awesome. <laughs> okay, they're coming down again. Oh, yep. So we're still in the upper portion of Death Valley, and as you can see, it is February. <laughs> Some of us are a bit cold. Hunter said, thought it was supposed to be hot here. <laughs> yeah. So, now we're gonna head down to the bottom of Death Valley, and it should warm up down there. Wheel and a dually truck with a long bed. The road heading down is quite steep and there's a lot of curbs to it. But you just want to make sure that you gear down. And uh, so far, so good. But it should be fine. It's not nearly as steep as the road, uh, let's see, the Yosemite Road when we were coming down from Yosemite. That was even steeper than this one. This one's just a little bit more windy. 
but it's a gorgeous view, as you can see. Wait, no, no. different environment than less than 100 miles away probably as the crow flies even less than that to uh, the eastern Sierras Yosemite area where it's granite peaks and pine trees and lakes rivers and here we're at one of the lowest spots in fact the the highest spot in the lower 48 states is Mount Whitney that's probably less than 100 miles away from here. And now we're going to one of the lowest spots in the United States. All within, you know, this small radius. So California has has a lot of, uh, lot of varied terrain to it. It's the land I mean, of extremes. It is. Then you climb again. So that's where we're at now. We're climbing back out of the valley. As you can see out the window here. It's a long ways down there. But we're taking it easy. The old Ford's pulling pretty good. Let's see here, we're just running in third gear. Turbo boost about 20 PSI, nothing's overheating, 2,500 RPMs, running about 30, anywhere 30 to 40 miles an hour, depending on how steep the grade is. But it's a gorgeous drive. All kinds of colors through here. Nope, we've got another elevation sign coming. like it's like we've climbed back up to 4,000 feet so I reset my uh, miles per gallon calculator right before we got into Death Valley typically on the road I get about 10 and a half miles a gallon you can see here with these steep grades it's nothing close to that and let's check the temperature see that it's like it's about 46 degrees we'll check the temperature again once we descend into Death Valley see how much of a temperature change it is I don't know if you read that sign or not it said Thune Pass just under 5,000 feet at the top here so we still got to go all the way down to below sea level to get to Death Valley.
we made it without crashing. We're at Stovepipe Wells Campground. There's a full hookup portion, and then there's just a national park portion. It's basically a dirt parking lot, I'll show you. I wanted to show you the temperature here at the bottom. 68 degrees, 20 plus degrees temperature change. And then uh, coming down, I picked up a few more miles per gallon too, as you can see. We ended up with 8.5. I'm getting in, get in. You see that uh, engine light? I'm actually stopped, so it doesn't mean anything. Anyway, look at the, I'm gonna show you the campground here. It's nothing fancy. We've already unhooked. Check out this sunset behind me here. Beautiful. So in Stove Pipe Wells, there's a couple of campgrounds here. The full hookups, you're gonna have to reserve because they're always packed. And the parking lot that we're in, it's basically a big dirt parking lot. Uh, no hookups, but there are shower, no, no. Not shower facilities, sorry. There's bathroom facilities and there's water that you can get. Uh, it's 14 bucks a night, so not bad. I'll be here for a couple of nights. Ready to check out the park though. All right, I don't know if you can see me, but the sun is going down in the background as you can see. That's the Sierra Nevadas behind me. So one of the cool things also about Death Valley is it's one of the darkest places um, on Earth. And in fact, the, I believe it's called the Astronomy Association has labeled it a dark sky area. So we're gonna try and get some pictures tonight. Hopefully they turn out. Haven't done too many of these yet. We've got one full day here in Death Valley. There's a few things we're gonna try and check out while we're here. One of the things here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a map of Death Valley. So right here at Stovepipe Wells, that's where we're camped. We're gonna probably go down to the main visitor center, which is Furnace Creek at some point today. But uh, right here next to Stovepipe Wells is this Mosaic Canyon. It's supposed to be a good hike. And then also there's supposed to be uh, quite a few sand dunes nearby. So we're gonna try and check those out today. I guess there's also some RV parking at Furnace Creek. I think they have some full hookups there as well. There's a few, there's a few full hookup places here, Stovepipe Wells where we're at. But I think they fill up pretty fast and you have to reserve them quite a bit in advance. And I think it's the same thing over at Furnace Creek as well. But, uh, yeah. Look in the back here. You can see that. Up there is that hike that we're going to go on. So it's real close to the campground.
right, so that's Mosaic Canyon Trail, just under two miles long. We didn't do the full trail. We went through the slotted canyon portion, which is probably the most beautiful part of the uh, part of the hike. Uh, youngest is six years old, oldest is 14, super easy. If you do have like some knee issues or leg issues, there's a couple of big step ups that are probably two or three feet. Um, that might provide a little difficulty for you, but in all, it's a pretty easy hike. It's pretty. So just a few miles from the campground, there's all these sand dunes that you don't want to miss. They're quite, uh, there's a lot of them. Some of them go pretty high. So let's go check it out. check them out while you're here. I think everybody's worn out. So as you saw in the video, there was a school group that was here today. And as I was listening to them and watching them, I was kind of comparing them to what our kids were doing today. And one of the benefits that we really like about this lifestyle, especially with, uh, with homeschooling, is the freedom that it allows your family. You get to go places when nobody else is there. You get to choose what your curriculum is. Uh, you get to choose how you're gonna teach it. But uh, you also get to choose to do things like take field trips, let your kids run, explore, have some freedom. I think that freedom gives your kids confidence. So as I was thinking about and listening to the school group that was here today, I was uh, watching them and their teachers were making sure adamantly that they were walking single file Nobody could go off and explore by themselves. Uh, and even at the end, they got to do one thing fun, and that was roll down the sand dune. But they all had to do it, single file, right at the place where they wanted them to do it. And I get it, you know, it's a large group, you gotta keep them organized. But it's hard for kids in that type of environment, especially kids that have tons of energy. You know, some kids are really good in school, um, and they're good at following orders but not every kid is. So I like that about, about what we're doing, the homeschooling, the freedom that it gives. You know, it's awesome. It's great to come to places like this with your kids. Let them run around, have some fun. Creek Visitor Center is just down the road from Stovepipe Wells and the Furnace Creek Visitor Center is actually about 200 feet 
below sea level, whereas stovepipe wells is about at sea level. So it gets a little bit warmer here, and this is one of the lowest levels in Death Valley. I think the actual lowest level in Death Valley is about 300 feet below sea level. So we're here to get our Junior Ranger packets. Put your right hand in the air. Say, I promise, I promise to help protect all national parks. Help protect all national parks. To help keep wildlife wild. To leave rocks, plants, and historic objects where I find them so everyone can enjoy them. We promise not to pick on each other. They all said it. He's been doing that the whole time. So. <laughs> He's like, I'm not sure if I can commit yet. <laughs> they literally will be like, I, hey, wait a minute, no, not too <laughs> Sunrise in Stovepipe Wells. Well, that's our day in Death Valley. You really should take a lot more time than one day to explore it. But because of our travel schedule, we had uh, we had to quick stop here and then move on. It's better than nothing at all. So in summary, Stovepipe Wells, big huge parking lot, big rig friendly, 14 bucks a night. There's bathrooms, uh, no showers though. But uh, there is a dump station and a place that you can fill up with fresh water uh, as you leave. So, time to head out.